Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, for the people from Clay City, this service is going to be a little different than what you're used to because you're used to having your Sunday school hour down there. Well, a while back, I was talking to Nate, and I told him about a young man that we go to church with that loves Jesus. I told him that this young man has been doing communion meditations at the First Christian Church of Noble for a few years, but now wants to preach a sermon. Well, Nate asked him if the elders here if it would be all right for that young man to come here to bring a message during your Sunday school hour. The elders agreed. I want to thank them for that. So now it is my pleasure to introduce my little brother in the Lord, Ethan Hall. You should have said younger, not little. <laughs> <laughs> younger and little. Let's, uh, let's go into a word of prayer, please. Dear Lord Father, we thank you for this blessing that you give us today. Lord, we just pray that, uh, that the message that we, that we, we give and receive is uh, given with boldness. And I just uh, I pray, Lord, that you just open our minds and our hearts to it. In Jesus' name I pray. Well, my name is Ethan Hall. Um, I'm from Noble. And for those of you who don't know, the people that are sitting right amongst you, is uh, they're my friends from Noble Christian Church. And uh, Gary, he uh, convinced them to come over because he said that I'd offer to buy them McDonald's today. So uh, if you would, please uh, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 23. While you're doing that, I'm going to give you a little story. When I was a little fellow, about six or seven, my parents took me to a Billy Graham revival. Now, I know you're probably thinking, that boy has never been little. <laughs> Brother Graham started off by asking a question. Brother Graham was the type of preacher that would say, What should we do with sin? with sin. Well, I was in the back, a couple of my buddies, my mom and dad were sitting on the front row, and I looked around and thought, one of these adults should help this man. One of his own kind ought to come through for him, you know what I mean? But no one did, I felt for a man. I didn't want to say anything out loud because it just wasn't in our culture to do that in this particular church. So I stood up and gestured to him, we don't know, we don't know. But he's not paying attention to me. I'm just a little fellow in the back. You know, preachers usually uh, repeat themselves two or three times. So the second time, he kind of cried it out. What should we do? Say it, say it, say it. Once again, my little heart went out to him. I stood up and gestured with greater gestures. They don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Only God knows. Ask, don't ask us, ask him. I was trying to help the man. So a third time, he kind of whispered it. What should we do with sin? With sin? I stood up in the voice of John Knox. I said, nip it in the bud. You gotta nip it, baby. Nip it in the bud. You gotta nip it. Next thing I knew, in the twinkle of an eye, I don't remember the trip. I don't know, I don't remember someone getting me. Next thing I knew, I was sitting in the front row between Don and Julia Hall, my dad and mom. There was my, there was my daddy, and there was my mom. I don't know how I got there, but I was there. This was meant to be funny, but there is some deep spiritual truth here. 
If you find yourself caught in sin, this is the remedy. Go to Jesus and receive forgiveness and then nip it in the bud. It's really not rocket science. The problem is that we enjoy sin. Look at what Paul said about sin and its pleasures in Hebrews 11, 23 and 24. By faith, Moses, when he was coming to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So we must quit enjoying sin and go to Jesus for forgiveness. Now you might be asking, how do I go to Jesus? Well, the first thing to know and understand is that heaven is a free gift. Romans 6, 23. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to repeat that one more, one more time just so you'll get it. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the gift that he gives for us is eternal life. What is a gift? It is not earned or deserved. It is grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Now let's see what the Bible has to say about man. Man is a sinner. It makes it impossible to receive, to accept God's free gift. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What is sin? Doing bad, but also not doing what is right. James 4, 17. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. But rather than focus on the bad news, there is good news. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life in order for us to be restored to God, our Creator. John 14, 6. How do we get restored to God? First, we need to believe. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The phrase, whoever believes, means to continue in belief that does not cease. This is the foundational to a relationship with God. We have to build on this foundation. Next, we have to repent. Acts 2.38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But that is not all. Acts 26, 20, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Repent is a Greek word, means change, changing our minds, change the way we think. Therefore, we repent, central in the process of coming to God. Next, we discover that it is essential to make what is called the good confession. This is spoken about in Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Matthew 10, 32 Verse, or verse, or Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. Whoever acknowledges me before, before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Jesus said, I, he will acknowledge us before his Father if we acknowledge him before men. 
The next thing we need to know to do is be baptized. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16, 16. <coughs> the, the words of Jesus are recorded. Jesus himself instituted this sacrament when he was baptized. Matthew 3, 13, verse, verse 13 and 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is not a word. You do not baptize yourself. You are passive. And just like the Spirit of God descending on, descended on Jesus, when we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I am sure that our Heavenly Father tells his angels, this is my child in whom I love, and I am with, and, and well pleased. Romans 6, verse 4. We were therefore buried with him through the baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through glory, or through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Colossians 2:12. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. Finally, it is important to make what is, what is called, or to make a lifelong commitment to follow Christ. Revelations 2.10, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. We need to grow in spiritual maturity. 2 Peter 3.18 But grow in grace and knowledge grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Minister to one another. Romans 12.15 Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Remember the Lord's death. Acts 2, 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Hebrews 3, 12. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Hebrews 10, 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Do not kid yourself into thinking that that can't happen. I have seen a minister that strayed from the faith. He has been blinded by Satan and doesn't even know it. Do you need to repent? of your sins? Do you believe in Jesus? Have you confessed Jesus? 
Do you want to receive Jesus Christ's forgiveness? Do you need to be baptized? If you have a decision to make, or would just like someone to pray with you, please come forward as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, and we just pray, Lord, these words have entered through the hearts of men. And Lord, we just pray that those who are listening and watching, that they, that they finally realize what they need to do is come to you and accept your name and accept your son's name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.